Hello and welcome to this quick Azure API management demo. My name is Love and today I'm going to walk you through a B2B scenario where you only allow a specific set of business accounts to access your APIs. In this video, we are trying to demonstrate how we can leverage Azure AD as an identity provider for the APM service. It is beneficial for the API provider as they can offload the user authentication and management to Azure AD. At the same time, the API consumer can also use their corporate login to access API. So this way, Azure AD enables a robust B2B security with just a few configurations. Here are some of the B2B security concerns that we would like to address in the context of API management. Protecting the developer's portal from any unauthorized access. Enabling secure user onboarding. And securing the API gateway with a proven authentication mechanism. If you look at a typical developer's portal, you will see that anyone with an email address can sign up for the service. But in B2B scenarios, this may not be desirable. So let's see how we can change that. What we have here is a APM service, which we have already provisioned with typical settings. Uh, but to enable user sign in with Azure AD, we have to first configure Azure AD as the identity provider for the APM service. This step provisions a Azure AD application behind the scene and performs the necessary token configuration and permission. You could choose to do it manually if you need more configuration. By default, the APM developer portal uses a username and password based identity provider. Uh, but if you want to use an external IDP, in our case, the Azure AD, you have to get rid of the default one. Now we have to add tenants who are allowed to authenticate. And once you publish the developer's portal, you should see that portal will start supporting Azure AD authentication. Let's look at another developer's portal where we have removed the sign up pages and the only option to sign in is using Azure AD. Let's see what the flow looks like when a new partner user logs in for the first time. Um, so you can see that the login is not successful uh, because it needs an administrator to consent on behalf of all the users. Uh, which is good in terms of security awareness because administrator can review the permission and be aware of the fact that a new enterprise application is being introduced in the system. Now let's see what the administrator flow would look like. If the partner administrator has permission to approve and consent application on behalf of all the users, they will see this consent pop up. The administrator can review the permission and decide whether to grant consent or not. Once the consent is given, a new enterprise application will be created in the partner Azure AD with the same name and ID. Enterprise applications are a great way to control access of users and groups to an application. At this point, the partner administrator has full control over who from the partner organization can access the APM services.
another aspect of B2B integration is user onboarding. As we have granted access to a partner tenant, everyone from partner organization can access these APIs. What if we want to control the access even further? Let's think of a scenario where we really want an air gap access control where only a special list of user accounts are allowed to access the APIs as we do not want any unnecessary signups. Uh, in such case, we can disable sign up from the portal and onboard users through a secure offline process and have total control over who can access those APIs. Let's take a look at that. Here, we are using Azure API Management REST APIs to create user and manage their subscription. First, we'll create a new user with the put request. If you see the identity of the user, it is marked as Azure AD. And the, the GUID is actually the object ID associated with the user in the partner tenant. After creating the user, we have to issue a patch request to be specific that this in fact is an Azure AD user because by default APM creates a local user as well. Once the user is created, you can create a subscription by associating it with a product. At this point, the user is onboarded to the APM and once the user logs into the developer's portal, they will find that they have been assigned with the subscription and ready to test the APIs. Now that we have provided access to the partner users to the developer's portal, let's test some of the APIs. You might have noticed that we are able to call the API endpoints both from the developer's portal and the client applications. And for authorization, we have only provided the subscription key, which is more of um, client identification than authentication. This is for sure not enough for B2B integration security wise. Uh, this is happening because we have only put access restrictions on the developer's portal, but haven't protected the API gateway. Let's see how we can fix that. Let's look at how we can use OAuth 2.0 with Azure AD to generate security tokens for the user to access the API gateway. Each API can specify OAuth server from which the API consumer should get the access token from. It does not matter whether you make the API calls from the developer's portal or from client application the bearer token should be from the specified OAuth server. To enable OAuth flow in developer's portal, we must configure the OAuth provider for the portal. As we have already registered an app for the developer's portal while configuring Azure AD as identity provider, we can use the same app. We have to specify the authorization and token endpoint uh, which supports multi-tenancy. So you must have observed we are using a common endpoint instead of a tenant specific endpoint. And also to support the authorization flow from the developer's portal, we have to provide these URLs as the redirect URIs. Now that we have configured the OAuth server, um, the next step is to assign uh, it to a target API. We can configure this by navigating to the API setting and choosing the correct OAuth server. If we browse to the API endpoint, which is now protected by the OAuth server, 
you'll notice that a new drop down appears under the authorization section by choosing the grant type uh, a new authorization code flow is initiated and the portal will receive the access token from the OAuth server and we can use this bearer token to make call to the API gateway if we invoke the request now we will receive a successful response right. let's remove the bearer token and see what happens the response is still successful this is because we have made provision to obtain the access token from the OAuth server but we are not validating it at the back end Let's fix that as well. To validate the user tokens, we will apply a built-in policy at the API gateway known as validate JWT. And we apply this policy at the product level so that all the APIs under this product must assert for a valid token from each incoming request. In this example, we are simply checking the issuer of the token since we are allowing users from two different tenants, API provider and the API consumers. The policy is asserting that the token be issued from any of these issuers. Now that the policy is applied, let's check if this is working. Let's do the same grant flow to obtain the token and see if the response is successful. And now, if we do not provide a valid token as part of the request, we are getting unauthorized response back. So this way the API gateway enforces every request it receives to have a valid access token regardless of whether the request is from the portal or any client application. Let's do a quick recap of all the security changes that we made in this demo to enhance B2B integration with respect to Azure API management. First, we restricted the access to the developer's portal, only allowing a partner tenant. Then we prevented unauthorized sign up by using an offline user onboarding process. And finally, we protected the API gateway with OAuth2 authorization using Azure AD. With that, we have come to the end of this demo. Thank you for watching.